Hello and welcome to this short tutorial about the Airbus brake fan. Now you may think, well, brake fan, how difficult can it be? It's just a big fan attached to the uh, brakes and I switch it on after landing and then it cools down the brakes. Well, it wouldn't be aviation if it would be that simple. I'm afraid there's some limitations, there's some rules and there are actually some situations where you shouldn't be using the brake fan at all. Brake fans are actually optional extras on the Airbus. If you own the Phoenix A320, you can switch them on and off via the EFB. Now, all the aircraft I've ever flown have brake fans installed and as a matter of fact, it is extremely rare that I come across an Airbus without brake fans. So they are very common and they're also very useful. So what's the big deal? Well, as the name suggests, it's just a big fan, two sets actually. Uh, they attach to the main uh, landing gear and they cool down the brakes uh, just in case they get a bit too hot. So how do you use them, when to use them and when not to use them? Well, the Airbus doesn't have uh, steel brakes. It has carbon brakes and carbon brakes are a bit more complicated than steel brakes. They're very good, they're very powerful, uh, they're also very expensive. So uh, at least at my company we're actually given a document that tells us how to treat the brakes, um, let's just say with some respect and to make sure they last a little bit longer uh, so that um, we save some money. In any case, uh, so we have these brakes and they need to be cooled down. So let's go through a scenario. We are approaching an airport. Uh, we're quite heavy, full of passengers, full of cargo. We have quite a bit of extra fuel because maybe the weather forecast wasn't so good. And uh, after landing, we have a fairly high brake temperature. So the rule is that you do not switch on the brake fans immediately after exiting the runway. The reason is that, especially on cold days, uh, you could actually cause what's called shock cooling. Uh, also, the, the brake fans are not uh, uniformly hot. There are some hot spots and things like that. So we, we actually had a whole document about this. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It also has to do with oxidation and all sorts of stuff. Just remember, when you get off the runway, do not switch on the brake fan. So the rule when to switch on the brake fan is actually fairly simple. If at a big airport with long taxiways, you wait five minutes. So you start the uh, clock once you leave the runway, you wait for five minutes and then you're allowed to switch on the brake fan. Now, if you're at a small airport where you're not gonna taxi as fast, you can switch it on just before you enter the parking stand. What is very important is that you never ever switch on the brake fan whilst you're parked. Because what happens is when you switch on the brake fan for the first few seconds, uh, some brake dust that has settled on the brakes is gonna be blown away. And that brake dust is actually pretty nasty stuff. Uh, it's known to be cancerous and it's just not very healthy. So the last thing you want to do is switch on the brake fan and blow all that dust into the face of the ground staff that is currently loading or unloading the aircraft. So at my company it is strictly forbidden to use the brake fan whilst you are parked at the parking position. It can be running but it has to be switched on before you actually enter your parking stand. And then there's a bit of a quirk with the brake fan. You see the maximum brake temperature for takeoff on the Airbus is 300 degrees Celsius. So if you reach the holding point of the runway and you see that one of the brakes is above 300 degrees, you should actually wait until uh, you can take off. So you would think, well, if I switch on the brake fan and I arrive at the holding point with, let's say, 200 degrees, I can take off, right? Wrong. Because what happens is the brake fan, unfortunately, blows directly onto the sensor that uh, measures the temperature of the brake. And so that sensor is no longer reliable. And we're not just talking a few degrees. We are talking of up to 150 degrees difference between what the sensor is showing you in the cockpit and the actual temperature of the brake. So what that means is 
if you switch on the brake fan, you cannot take off with a brake temperature higher than 150 degrees. If you do not switch on the brake fan, you can take off with a temperature higher than 150 but no more than 300 degrees. So when you push back, you have a short taxi, you look at your brake temperature, you need to decide if I switch on the brake fan now, will it be cool enough when we reach the runway to take off or it's already below 300 degrees, maybe we'll just leave it off and then uh, we have no problem. Because once you switch it on, you're committed to 150 degrees Celsius, which means that if you reach the holding point with, I don't know, 180 degrees, you cannot take off. You have to wait until the brakes have cooled down. Bit of a quirk, and that's why I said at the beginning, sometimes it's actually not such a good idea to use the brake fan. So where does that leave us in practice? Well, very simple. You land, you look at your brake temperature. You decide as the pilot, do I want the brake fan, yes or no? If you have a short turnaround, it's a hot day, might not be a bad idea. So if you taxi long, you switch it on after five minutes, otherwise just before you enter the parking stand. Now, as a general rule, once the aircraft is parked, we switch it off because it's just uh, polite to the ground stuff. These things are noisy and annoying. Uh, if you've ever stood next to one, it's not very pleasant. So usually once you park the aircraft, put the parking brake on, switch it off and leave it off. After pushback, have a think. How far do I have to taxi? What's the outside air temperature like? What is the brake temperature like? Do I think the brake fan will cool down the brakes to 150 degrees by the time we get to the holding point? If the answer is yes, by all means use it. The colder the brake, the better it works. If you think there might be a chance that it won't manage to cool it down in time, maybe a good idea not to uh, use it at all. Because the one thing you want to avoid is that you reach the holding point and then you have to tell ATC that you're gonna have to wait for another two, three minutes. And usually when that happens, you have another two aircraft behind you and uh, yeah, they're gonna get a bit annoyed. So those are the things I think uh, it's good to keep in mind. And those are the things uh, you can do on the flight sim if you want to be as realistic as possible. So a nice short video today, but I hope it uh, was interesting. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something today. That would be nice. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye-bye.